Hi, my name is John, and uh, one of my students had some problems with uh, Anton, uh, New Horizon, Calculus BC, uh, Chapter 2, Section 2. I believe it's called Limits uh, from a uh, number point of view, uh, computational technique. So let's go over some basics first. If I say limit as x approaches 5, so here's the x value, and this is 5. Uh, from the negative side right there, if I put a minus right over there, that means that give me a number that's close to 5 from the left. This is from the left. This is from the right. So from the left, I could give you 4. That's close to 5, right? From the left side. Uh, can, I, can you give me something that's a little bit closer? You could say 4.5. Can you give me something closer? 4.9. 4.99 and you can go 4.99999 so that's really close to 5 from the left side if I give you limit as x approaches 5 from the positive side that means from the right side they'll be like 5.01 5.001 you can even get closer extremely close maybe too close and that would be uh, number that's very very close to 5 from the right. If I give you the limit as x approaches 5, that means from both sides right here, from the left and from the right has to approach this value of 5. Okay, and that's all it means. Okay, so let's do an example. Example number 1, I believe, uh, which is page 130. Uh, the limit as, oh, they used 5 right there. Cool. x squared minus 4x plus 3. What we can do is we can actually distribute the limit uh, to all of these terms. You can do the limit as x approaches 5 of x squared minus the limit as x approaches 5 of 4x plus the limit as x approaches 5 of 3. Well, when we take the limit as x approaches 5 of x squared, it becomes 5 squared, right? Which is 25 plus, you just plug it in, 5 uh, times 4 is 20, so it's going to be minus 20. And then limit as x approaches 5 of a constant is that constant. No matter what the x approaches, there's no x right there. If you're not sure, you can just write that next to the 0. x to the 0 is 1, right? 5 to the 0 is 1 still. So it approaches plus 3. Adding this up, you end up with uh, 23. That's your answer. Let me see if that makes sense or not. Hmm. 25. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Messed up there. 20 minus, 25 minus 5 is uh, 5, plus 3 is 8. Let's the answer go. Hmm, doesn't match up quite well. Whatever. So here we go. Okay, so let's do example number 2. Um, limit as uh, oh we're not going to do example number two we're just going to skip number example number two let's do example number three uh, what's the limit as x approaches positive infinity of 2x to the fifth right so give me a number that's approaching infinity a really big number it could be 1 million 1 billion 1 gazillion if I raise it to the fifth power, I get a really big number, and then multiply it by 2, I get a huge number. It's approaching positive infinity. Well, what about this guy? What's the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 2x to the fifth? You notice that there's a negative right there. A negative times a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative. There's five of them. You end up with negative infinity negative infinity to the fifth power because of this negative being multiplied by five of them you end up with uh, times by two of course you end up with negative number and it's going towards negative infinity um let's try another different problem example number four do i want to do that okay yeah let's do example number four what's the limit as x approaches two of 5x cubed plus 4 over x minus 3. Uh, you can use the limit to the numerator and the denominator. You can break it up. 
It's the limit as x approaches 2 of 5x cubed plus 4 over limit as x approaches 2 of x minus 3. Uh, going from here and plugging in, 2 cubed is 3. I'm sorry, 2 cubed, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, times 5 is 40, plus 4 is 44. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. It's going to be negative 44. I believe that's our answer in the back in the book. Yes, perfect. This is on page 132, by the way, of your Anton book. Uh, let's try example number six. This gets where this is where uh, this is example five. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. Limit as x approaches two of x squared minus four over x minus two. Now, if we do the same thing, limit as x approaches two of x squared minus four over limit as x approaches 2 of x minus 2. Four, 2 squared is 4 minus 4 is 2 squared minus 4 over 2 minus 2. You end up with 4 minus 4 which is 0, 2 minus 2 which is 0. Ooh, that's a really sad face. 0 over 0 is a really complicated number. So, we can't do that. We can do something else though with this. Limit Let's do it right here. As x approaches 2 of x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. We do know that this binomial, two terms, uh, can be factored because it's a difference of squares, right? All difference of squares can always be factored to its conjugates. x plus 2 times x minus 2. If you multiply these two out and fold it, you get x squared minus 4. Ooh, what do you notice? Now these factors cancel. At this stage, now you can do the limit as x, x approaches 2. The limit as x approaches 2 of x plus 2 now would be 4. You can't actually put 2 in here or here, but now you can because of this canceling effect. In fact, if you want to put like a number very, very close to 2, like 1.9999999, and then square it, minus 4, and then 1.9999 minus 2, you should end up with 4. I'll show you how to do this on your calculator. Uh, I'm going to change this a little bit. Um, Got to turn it off or that kind of helps. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to put 1.9999 as a uh, my uh, from the left side of 2. I'm going to enter that and I'm just going to go uh, the answer here which is 1.99 square that minus 4 and parentheses divided by the answer which is 1.9999 plus 2. Nope, minus 2. And I should get approximately 4. 3.999. There it is right there. And I could have done it as well for 2.0000001. That's extremely close to 2, right? And I'm going to do the same thing all over again. You notice how I used the entry button, second and then entry, to get back to here. I used this value. I end up with 4 again. You cannot actually put, if I put 2 in here and try it again, whoops. And then try it again, I get a uh, domain error. So I cannot actually put 2, but I could put a number very close to 2, like 1.999 or 2.0001. It's so close that it will actually round it to 4 as my answer. Okay? Hopefully that helps a little bit. What about this guy right here? Uh, let's go to example number 7. I believe they're like, uh, I don't know, 12. 10, 11 examples. I'm just going to do one of them at a time. Oh, sorry about that. Guys, do it. So, example 7. Limit as x approaches 3 of x squared minus 6x plus 9 over x minus 3. Well, if I plug in 3 in here, I would get division by 0. And if I plug in here, I'll probably end up with 0 as well. So, I'm not going to plug in 3. I am going to factor this though. x squared minus 6x plus 9, x and x. This sign tells me they're both going to be the same sign as this, which is minus. And what's the factor of 3? 1 times 9 or 3 times 3. Obviously, it's going to be 3 and 3. 
and this kind of helps me too as well. I cancel these out. So limit as x approaches 3 of x minus 3 over 1. So it's these canceled out. Now you can plug in 3. You end up with 3 minus 3 over 1, which is 0 over 1, which is all that for nothing. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, but you still should, should end up with 0. So plug in like 2.999 in, into this equation, you should end up with approximately 0. Let's do solution B. I'm um, sorry, problem B. Limit as x approaches negative 4 of, I'm just going to factor it out, uh, 2 and then x plus 4. Do you see how I did that? 2x plus 8. I noticed that there's a binomial, two terms. The common factors are 2. And if you're not sure, just distribute this out. 2x plus 8. That kind of helps you. On the bottom, it's x squared. Uh, plus x minus 12. To factor this, step 1, step 2 is take your x's out. This tells you that it's going to be 1 plus and 1 minus. So if this sign is negative, that means 1 plus 1 minus. If this is positive, that means they're both going to be the same sign. Make sure you fold it out just to kind of make sure. And the factors of 12 is 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4, and it's going to be 3 and 4. The 4 is going to go with the plus and then the 3. So, x plus 4 times x minus 3, and these cancel out. Now you can plug in negative 4. 2 on the numerator, negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7, negative 2 7, which is approximately negative uh, 2, 8, 5, 7, 1, 4, and there it is. I know my 7 pretty well. Uh, and it's got a funiculum uh, bar right there. It goes 0 0.285714, 2857142857, blah, blah, blah. Example 8. Um, let's try to do example 8 right here. I think we have enough space to do it. Limit as x approaches 4. From the positive side of 2 minus x over x minus 4 times x plus 2. You notice that nothing cancels with these factors, so you can't really do nothing about them, unfortunately. So if we, uh, we're going to use the calculator approach. So what number are we going to use for approaching 4 from the positive side? I'm going to try 4.000001. Okay, so. Where's my calculator? Oh, there it is. Um, let's clear that. Let's clear that. I'm oh, sorry. Let's clear that. Okay, so 4.000000001 from the right side. Uh, I'm going to plug in 2. Uh, I have to put parentheses around that. 2 minus my answer, 4.0001 divided by parentheses. I'm going to have to put two parentheses on these because it's going to be answer minus 4 times the answer plus 2. And you don't have to put n parentheses on these uh, at all unless you like squaring it or cubing it or raising it to a power of sorts. Mm -hmm. Just plug it in. You end up with negative 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. Ah, oh, what's it going towards? It's going towards negative infinity. Okay? I want you to do part B and part C on your own. Part B says the limit as x approaches 4 from the negative side. What number are you going to put in uh, from the 4 from the negative? It's going to be like 3.99999. And then see what happens, okay? And then part C, you should be able to see what's going on from both sides. Um, let's do example number nine. What's the limit? Uh, before we do limits on these a little bit, I'm going to show you something. What's the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x? Remember, as x gets bigger and bigger, 
x and then 10, 100, 1 million, 1 billion, etc. Uh, it becomes 1 tenth, this becomes 1 one hundred, that becomes 1 over 1 million, that becomes 1 over 1 billion. 1 tenth is 0.1. 1 one hundredth is 0 0.01. 1 one one millionth is 0 0.000001. 10 hundred thousandth, 10 thousand, hundred thousandth, 1 million, etc. So this number is approaching 0. So make sure you got get this concept out. Limit as x approaches infinity of this number right here. This number is pretty important because it's in the denominator. 1 over infinity approaches 0. Okay. In fact, it goes from 0 from both directions, whether it's plus or minus. All right. So armed with this information, let's do example number 10. Hmm, I got a back page. I'm going to use it. Uh, example 9, actually, I lied. Limit as x approaches infinity of 3x plus 5 all over 6x minus 8. Okay, so what we do is, what's the highest power, which is the degree? Degree is 1 right here. It's the highest power, right? So degree is 1. Given with that information, you divide by x to the 1. Divide by x, divide by x, divide by x, divide by x. What we're doing is we're uh, multiplying the top by 1 over x and multiplying the denominator by 1 over x. Do you see that? It's multiplying by 1, 1 over 1, right? So let's see. Let's clear this up a little bit. What do you end up with? Limit as x approaches infinity. 3x over x, which is 3 plus 5 over x, and then 6x over x, which is 6, plus, um, sorry, minus 8 over x. And now you can plug in infinity in here and in here. 3 plus 0, that's 0 right there. And then 6 minus 8 over infinity is 0. Ha! Ah, 1 half. 3 over 6 is 1 half, right? Um, Let's try example number 10. Let's look at uh, example. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm going to do example number 11. Um, yeah, Ooh, there's also example 14. Okay, uh, let's do example 10. Limit as x approaches negative infinity of 4x squared minus x all over 2x cubed minus 5. What's the degree? Remember what the de degree was? The degree is highest power, which is God. I'm sorry, wrong degree. It's 3. Where does that 3 comes from? It comes from this 3 right here. That's the highest power, right? You see why it's God? God is the highest power. Get it? Got it? Good. So what, we, what are we going to do? I am going to divide it by x to the third x to the third x to the third x to the third and x to the third so what I end up with limit as x approaches negative infinity cleaning that up I get 4 over x minus uh, 1 over x squared that will be 2 minus 5 over x cubed 5 over x cubed the x cubed cancels here in the with just the coefficient now you can plug in infinity here, 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 and that's it. 4 over infinity is 0, minus 1 over infinity is 0, 2 minus 5 over infinity is 0. You end up with 0 over 2, which is 0. All that for nothing, again. Uh, what about part B? I want you to do part B on your own. I think you should be able to uh, work it out. Um, let me see if I want to do this one or not. Um, I haven't gone over example number 11. And let's see how that works out. Oh, I see how they did it. Okay, so uh, part A, uh, the limit as x approaches infinity 
of 3x plus 5 all over 6x minus 8. Uh, what they're talking about uh, in this example is as x approaches a very huge number or a very huge negative number, you can kind of see what happens to the numerator and the denominator in comparison, right? So you notice that the dominant term is 3x. As x gets huge, I really don't care about this term in the numerator. Same with the denominator. I don't really care about this constant. If x is 1 million, that would be 3 million plus 5. See that right there? Huge. So you take this number, 3 million, and then we add 5. It's insignificant compared to 3x. So you literally end up with 3x over 6x limit as x approaches infinity, of course. And you notice the cancels, cancellation effect. x is canceled, it's the same number, you end up with one half. <gasps> oh, a little bit different than what we did here, didn't we? Um, this one, I believe it, was it 3x plus five? Yeah, 3x plus five, 6x minus eight, okay? So this is a little bit different approach, but you get the same answer. Let's try another bit, uh, bigger problem, example 12b. Um, limit as x approaches negative infinity of 4x squared minus x over 2x cubed minus 5. Uh, again, uh, the value of x as x gets bigger negative of this right here, looking at the numerator, x is insignificant compared to x squared as x becomes huge, right? Same with the denominator this becomes in insignificant, or this is the dominating term. So you literally end up with limit as x approaches negative infinity of 4x squared over 2x cubed. We could simplify that. x squared cancel. You can simplify the 4 into 2. That becomes limit as x approaches infinity, negative infinity, of 2 over x. Now you can plug in x equals infinity. What's 2 over negative infinity? And it would zero. All that for nothing again. Got it? Uh, I'll let you do part C on your own to see what you get. All right? Example 12 gets a little bit more difficult. Um, limit as x approaches infinity of cube root of 3x plus 5 all over. 6x minus 8. Uh, what this tells you is that when the limit of a function becomes the function of its limit. So you can actually literally put this on the inside if you want. So that becomes the cube root of the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x plus 5. Was it plus 5? Yeah, it was plus 5 all over uh, 6x minus 8. So what you notice is, it's like this problem right here, and then we take the square root of it. Uh, since the degree equals 1, see that 1 right there, the highest power? It's 1 here. So I'm going to divide it by x to the 1. Divide by x, divide by x, divide by x, divide by x. So let's just rewrite it. Cube root of limit as x approaches infinity of 3x over x is 3 plus 5 over x all over 6x over x is 6 minus 8 over x and you notice that this portion goes away to 0 this portion goes away to 0 as well you end up with the cube root of 3 6 which is 1 half and that's your final answer okay uh, example 13 I'm going to do a couple more questions for you and then this gets a little bit harder Example number 13 is tricky. Part A. I'm not going to do example number 14. We're going to stop at example 13A, okay? Uh, limit as x approaches infinity of square root of x squared plus 2 all over 3x minus 6, right? Uh, there's actually two ways to do something like this. I'm going to show you method one and method two. Method one, since what we're doing is, um, uh, since it's under the square root, uh, what's the degree? 
you say the degree is 2, right? It's actually 1. Here's the 1, and this is a 2, but what's the square root of x squared? Oh, it's x to the 1. Actually, it's the absolute value of x, but I really don't care about that for now. Okay? So the degree is 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide it by x to the 1, x. Since I'm under the square root, I have to divide by x squared because it's under the square root. Because if I square root uh, x squared, it's divided by x. Divided by x, correct? So let's clean that up. That's the tricky part. That's the key. Uh, what's a key do? Key opens the door to knowledge, right? And it's something that you need to, uh, if you didn't know this, then you're going to be in trouble. Okay? So, limit as x approaches infinity, square root of 1 plus 2 over x squared, all divided by 3 plus 3 minus 6 over x. Simplify this, 6 over x. This cancels to 0 as x becomes infinity. That cancels. You end up square root of 1 over 3, which is 1 third. Approximately. What's what's method number 2? Actually, there's three methods, but square root of um, x squared plus 2 over 3x minus 6. Since uh, we're just going to use the dominant approach as x goes towards infinity, only when you have like a really huge number, then you can say this is negligent compared to negligible compared to x squared, right? Same with the denominator. You end up with square root of x squared over 3x. The square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. Don't forget that. It's not x. It's, at the, it's the absolute value of x over 3x. And as x gets big, like 1 million, would be 1 million over 3 million. What is that equal to? 1 third. And we know that. You can divide by x, divide by x, top and bottom. Method 3 now. Using your calculator. Give me a huge number. It really doesn't matter what that huge number is. Um, I'm just going to pick a number. Nine, 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 nine. Okay. And I'm going to put square root of the answer squared plus 2. And I'm going to get out, and then I'm going to divide that by, you have to put parentheses around it, 3x minus 6. 3 times the huge number. Whoops. Ooh, I did it wrong. Sorry, let's try it again. Square root of the answer squared plus 2. Get out. And then I'm going to divide that by uh, parentheses, 3 times the answer minus 6. Uh, what is the answer? Plus 2? No, it should have been 3 times the answer. Oh, jeez. I used the entry button? What happened here? One more time. Um, sorry about that. 12 square root of the answer squared plus 2. Get out. Divide that by parentheses. 3 times the answer. There it is. Sorry about that. Minus 6. And I should get approximately one third, which is approximately 0.3333 bar. There it is right there. Yeah. Uh, you got to be very careful with your answer key and your entry key. All right. And so make sure you use these entry and answer key. And hopefully this will help you with your problems on 2.2. Good luck, guys. Thanks. Bye.